Do you want to sound like a native English speaker? Hey guys, today's video is super important. If you want to sound more like a native English speaker, then this video is perfect for you because I'll be sharing with you the 20 most common and used idioms in English. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notification that way you can notify whenever I post new English videos. So first, let me quickly discuss with you guys what an idiom is because not everybody knows. So an idiom is a figurative language, which means that it's not always supposed to be taken seriously. And a big problem with idioms is that they don't translate very well in other languages because they don't actually mean what the words mean. You will see with the examples. But they are super important to be able to speak more like a native English speaker. The first phrase is 24-7. So 24-7 stands for 24 hours out of the seven days of the week, which just means all day, every day. Sometimes we do use it as its literal term. For example, some pharmacies say that they're open 24 seven, which means that they're always open. And then sometimes we use it to exaggerate. For example, we would use it to exaggerate how many times someone does this. For example, I could say, she chews gum 24 seven, or she laughs 24 seven. So she either chews gums a lot or she's constantly laughing. Number two, go the extra mile. Go the extra mile. So when we say to go the extra mile, that doesn't mean that we're like walking and we have to walk another mile. It just means that we're putting in extra effort. We're doing more than what we're supposed to be doing. Whenever we have a project at school, there's always that one student that goes the extra mile and maybe puts glitter all over their poster or does extra research. The third phrase is ring a bell, ring a bell. So the literal term is just really just ringing a bell. For example, you go to a house and you have to ring the doorbell. You go ring, but also at school, for example, we have a bell that rings whenever we need to change classes. So then you can also use ring the bell, but we also use it as a way to express that something reminds us of something that maybe we've seen or we've heard of, for example, I could say, did you see the new movie? For example, it's called Just a Teenager. Did you see the new Just a Teenager movie? And I could say, hmm, that rings a bell. That rings a bell. Maybe you heard about it or maybe you did see it, but you just don't remember the name. Ring a bell. Number four, to have butterflies in my stomach. Butterflies in my stomach. So this doesn't mean that we have actual butterflies in our stomach, it just means that we're nervous. I remember that when I was first doing the lives and I was, you know, just starting out, I would have butterflies in my stomach. I used to get very nervous. And then I started to feel a lot more comfortable during lives. Number five, get out of hand, get out of hand. So we would use this phrase when something is just out of control. Maybe we didn't expect this thing to happen, or maybe this just big problem is just out of hand. So it got out of hand. Number six, a piece of cake, a piece of cake. So this just means that the task was super simple or easy. For example, I could say my homework was a piece of cake. I did it in 10 minutes, a piece of cake. Number seven, pull yourself together, pull yourself together. So this just means to kind of get control of things again and just refocus and then just pulling yourself together, being back to normal. You will hear this a lot in movies. For example, the main characters having this big problem, maybe they just broke up and now they're all sad, they're going to parties, they're not studying and then their friend tells them, pull yourself together, man, pull yourself together. So just, you know, okay, that happened in the past, but now just keep on moving forward. You need to graduate. You can't go into parties like that type of stuff. Just pull yourself together. Number eight, to cut some slack. To cut someone some slack. This just means to not judge someone too harshly. 
So imagine it was your first time roller skating and your friends are making fun of you. You could say, hey, cut me some slack. It was my first time. Number nine, once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. So this just means it's very rare. It's very rare. So it doesn't happen very often, which makes sense because we don't see a blue moon very often. And a good example could be, um, he used to see his grandmother once in a blue moon, once in a blue moon. But now that she passed away, he regrets it, which just means that he wouldn't go see his grandmother very often. But now that she passed away, he wishes that he could have gone more and seen her more. Number 10, to look like a million dollars, to look like a million dollars. Wouldn't that be great if we were able to look like a million dollars or even better, have a million dollars? But this is not the case. When someone says that you look like a million dollars, then you should take it as a compliment because it just means that you look really good. We don't really use this as much with guys, it's just mostly used with females. Number 11, taste of your own medicine. A taste of your own medicine. You're not actually consuming medicine, but we would use this phrase when someone is either treating someone badly or is doing the wrong thing, and that ends up happening to them. For example, I could say, oh my God, Vanessa kept on prank calling me. So I decided to give her a taste of her own medicine and I prank called her back. So she was doing something bad to me, so I decided to do it back to her. A taste of your own medicine. Number 12, to stab someone in the back. To stab someone in the back. If we take the literal meaning of this idiom, then we would get in a lot of trouble because you can't just go around stabbing people's backs. But this idiom actually means that we're hurting someone that trusted us. For example, you could stab your friend in the back if you guys were really close and then you betrayed her. Maybe you didn't tell her about the party or maybe you decided to hang out with other people and not invite her. Number 13, get it out of your system. Get it out of your system. So we would use this phrase when imagine you've wanted to do something for a very long time and you don't want to postpone it any longer. For example, I could say, I've been mad at Trufa for a very long time. And I decided to tell her, I had to get it out of my system. I had to get it out of my system. In case, I don't think you guys can see her, but Trufa's right here. She's sleeping, my baby. Number 14, rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. If we take the literal meaning of this phrase, then it makes zero sense. But rule of thumb, it just means an unwritten rule or something that isn't backed up by science. It's just something that people just decide to do. For example, it's a rule of thumb to add oil to boiling water when you wanna make pasta. Number 15, hit the books, hit the books. So this literally means you're gonna grab a book and hit it. But this expression is commonly used between high school students and college students because it means that you're gonna study. So I could tell my friend, oh no, I can't go to the party tomorrow. I've gotta hit the books. I just gotta study a lot. Number 16, to give the benefit of the doubt. To give the benefit of the doubt. This just means that until you understand everything and have all the information, you're not gonna have a strong opinion. You're just gonna be neutral. Number 17, easier said than done. Easier said than done. This one's pretty obvious. It just means that it's easier to just say they're gonna do it than actually doing it. For example, my friend just told me that she wants to wake up at 4.30 every single day in the morning. And I could be like, it's easier said than done. Like, it's easier to just say you're gonna wake up at 4.30 than actually waking up at 4.30. I could not wake up that early. <laughs> Number 18, cut to the chase. 
cut to the chase. So this just means to get to the point. Imagine that you've been talking with someone for a very long time and they still haven't gotten to the main reason why they're talking to you. So you would just say, cut to the chase. Number 19, to draw the line, to draw the line. So this just means that you know your boundaries. This is your limit and you won't let it keep on happening. For example, I could say, having a messy roommate is fine, but when they leave dirty dishes everywhere, now that is where I draw the line. That is where I draw the line. And lastly, to take with a pinch of salt. Take with a pinch of salt. So you know how when you just grab salt, you don't grab a lot. So imagine someone tells you something, when they say to take with a pinch of salt, it just means to keep in mind that it might not be accurate and maybe what they're telling you isn't correct. So I could say, my friend Kevin told me that they're gonna be able to show free movies every Thursday. But Kevin told me that, so I'm gonna take it with a pinch of salt because sometimes he lies or he doesn't understand everything. Well guys, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you found it helpful. And I swear that if you start using these idioms, you're really gonna sound more like a native speaker. And you're gonna be hearing these a lot. So it's very important for you to know what they mean. That way you're gonna be able to understand. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you get notified whenever I post new English videos. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.